Hello Dokken Battle. This game is so pretty good. I can't believe this game has lasted for six years now. Ladies and gentlemen, six years. A baby could be born six years ago and be like six right now. That's crazy. I used to play this game like three years ago and I would play it a lot. Look at my rank. You see that shit? That means I'm a veteran. Mobile games are usually pay to win and are cheap cash grabs. Some mobile games are worse than others. People hate gachas. I hate gachas. But it's in my blood to summon and to test my luck in these games. Which is why I never spend money on them. It's like throwing money at Dr. Gero's face. Which is the same as throwing it in the trash. I know I said goodbye to Dragon Ball Legends, but I just thought a lot of you would be interested in the other Dragon Ball mobile game. And hey, maybe some of you haven't even played this game and would like to see what it has to offer. This will be the last Dokkan video I will ever make. So stop asking me. Unless, you know, they add Ultra Instant Vegito. But if you are that thirsty, desperate, etching for more Dokkan, then go watch my playlist, you aggressive, dirty, Ogre. So there are two versions of Dokkan, one being the global version and the other the JP version. They are essentially the same game, but they are actually not. You see, the JP version is actually months ahead of the global version, meaning they get all the new characters, updates, and sometimes extra rewards months before everyone else. In a way, it's the director's cut, the, the ultimate, ultimate version. version, but it's in Japanese. So as of right now on the global version of the game, the version I am playing, currently we are on the sixth anniversary with Master Ultra Instinct Goku and Sonic Vegeta as the anniversary characters. And you know what that means. Come to Papista and Guero the Batalas Festival Linguine and give me this Goku release of a shit. Wah! This time I will get it. I must believe. Ooh, release the shit. What is all this trash? Chala, hey chala, shit, 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 shit. I will summon more later. So what does this game have to offer? Well, Jimmy, I'm glad you asked because when I tap on start, you can see the modes. The first one is called quest, which is basically the story mode, which is eh. Then you skip this, this, and pretty much everything else except events because that's where the fun is. Also, portals of memory is a place for you to play the old events. It's pretty useful sometimes. The rest, I don't touch because <laughs> I simply, frankly, cannot be bothered. Now, in the events is where all the juicy content is. There is so much content in this game. It's actually pretty scary. I'm only like 10% done. This is a game that will last a very, very long time. I will probably be dead in an alleyway and you will all have a family and then Mufasa comes and says, we are all connected in the great circle of life. That's how long this game will last. Story is where you get a bunch of free, free characters. characters. The free characters are actually better than the summoned ones. I can't believe I just said that. I felt like I just broke the mobile gaming law. You see, you can max out all the free characters, but you can't max out all the summoned ones unless, you know, you spend all of your money, you stinky, rich pimp, or get really lucky in the summons. For example, look at this Mutant Roshi. You see him? Well, you can actually get him for free and awaken him to an LR, which is actually the highest rarity in the game. Growth is just growth. Get XP, level up characters, get a measuring tape. They say it's the size from your thumb to your wrist. Growth, that's a growth, that. You know the drill. But you can get this free LR pass if you want. See, already I'm enjoying the game and I haven't even played the game yet. Challenge is the main part of the game. This is where you get to Dokkan Awaken your characters. The process is simple. You summon a character, then you Z awaken them, and then you Dokkan awaken them. Dokkan awakening changes a character to its true form. The art is different and the moves are different. If you happen to summon the new Ultra Instant Goku, you then have to play this event to collect all his awakening medals. It's actually pretty addictive because every time you summon a new character, <laughs> You then have something to do. It's a never ending cycle of content. You know what? Let's actually try this event. You know, I've never played the Dokkan on this channel, so let's give it a try. Yeah, the gameplay is, uh, it's really <laughs> boring to watch because all I'm doing is tapping bubbles. But you see, it's not just about tapping bubbles. The beauty of Dokkan is how everything is put together. You have these amazing super attacks that have their own distinct aesthetic to them that look like the anime, but actually, they don't. Some characters have transformations under certain conditions which make the game even more exciting. And on top of that, the music. Oh god. The music. The music in Dokkan may be the best music in all Dragon Ball games. You just know they were in the studio like.
All of this playing together with this menacing boss fight is just jaw-dropping. It's truly a work of art. Shaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaa
and keep moving forward. That's a weird zone. There was a dark time though. In fact, there was a time when this game was so ugly. I remember they released SSJJ4 Gojira without his leader skill, meaning all you summoned was the art. What game does that? It's always SSJ4 Gojira. It's always him. He always ruins the game. But to see them where they are now is truly amazing. Maybe, maybe there is hope for humanity. But in the end of the day, it's just a mobile game. So who actually gives a shit?